So where's the instability coming from? Remember that the reason that, this, that these are electrophiles in the first place is because of the delta positive on the carbonyl carbon. The reason they're electrophiles in the first place is because of the delta positive on the carbonyl carbon. So the way to make them more electronegative is to kind of get rid of this positive charge or to make this more stable. Um, well, last term we saw that carbon chains, alkyl groups, are electron donating. And we saw we basically just have to memorize that. How are they electron donating? Well, they're just more electron donating than hydrogens for the simple reason, basically, that they have a lot more electrons around them, uh, to, to put it kind of crudely. So that, that's actually going to be, continue to be crucial throughout the rest of this term. So it's good that you remembered that. Alkyl groups, carbon chains, are electron donating. So these carbon chains here are stabilizing this delta positive, making it less unhappy and less reactive. And this hydrogen can't donate those electrons. So it is going to be more reactive. Good. Yeah, you work that out. And then there was, I think, an example that had a chlorine. Right. So if chlorine was attached to one of those carbons, then or it would be like slightly divided, right? Because now. Chlorine make it more reactive. Yeah, what's the effect of adding a halogen to That's make it? It's going to be super pulling of electrons. Right. So then now it's only going to have the R at the end, like mm -hmm. the carbon chain at the end. Why would it be more than like? So did we decide that this chlorine is making this more or less reactive? More. Less stable. After all, we said that electron donors are stabilizing. So electron withdrawers must be destabilizing. Because if you draw like the dipole moments on the one with the chlorine, then if there's going to be one going up towards oxygen, one going down towards chlorine, Right? And then if you drew it for one with two carbons, or just a carbon and a hydrogen, then there would be two like to the side and one up. Two to the side, two, two. Oh, no, 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 in and up. Dipoles? Yeah. Now let's see, in this, in this compound, we, we can kind of simplify things. We don't have to go into too much detail. But I believe this compound only has one dipole the dipole between the carbon and the oxygen. After all, a carbon-carbon bond is not really a no, polar I bond. Mean, like, you know those arrows that you draw with like the line? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, but this only has one of those. Right, and then that one, well, that, that one has two, like one point in the opposite direction, which makes it more like polar. Right? Yeah, this does have two dipoles, that's right. Um, uh, that's, uh, I think you could give a good explanation in terms of that. That's right. But we can actually simplify things. We don't need to go into so much detail. Our basic simplification here, the reason this is reactive is because this carbon is electron deficient. So if you put electron donors around it, it becomes less reactive. And if you put electron withdrawers around it, it becomes more reactive. That's so as much it's detail. Be a lot more electron deficient. That's right. Not only is this electron deficient now because it's connected to the oxygen, but also this chlorine is going to be pulling some of the electrons away. Even though the chlorine is not directly connected to this carbon, it's still going to be pulling electrons in its, in its direction. But, uh, mm -hmm. but is it more reactive than an aldehyde? Oh, I mean, is a ketone with a halogen more reactive than aldehyde? That's not something I think you would be expected to know off the top of your head. So, um, but uh, if I had to take a guess, I would guess that, yeah, the effect of a halogen, I would guess, is more significant than putting this hydrogen here. But that's just a guess. I'd have to look that up. So we have three of them to compare. Yes. Three carbons.
The one with six chlorines would probably steal a lot more electrons, so that one would be the most reactive, right? That's right. So the question is to rank these in order of increasing favorability of hydration. Well, no, wouldn't you think that the most reactive one would be the first one? This one here? Yeah. Now, let's see, why are you saying this is more reactive than the bottom one? Because that one has, oh, okay, I guess not. Now, this is actually a case where we do have to compare the effect of the hydrogen and the chlorine. Do chlorines make you more or less reactive? More. Yeah, and this has three extra chlorines on it, so that's a big extra impact there. Um, we, we know that aldehydes are a little more reactive than ketones usually, but that, it seems unlikely that's going to be outweighed by having the three extra chlorines over here. But now in between the aldehyde and the ketone, the aldehyde is going to be better because the methyl group or the other ones, like CH3, is giving off more electrons. Right. I guess the way I think of it is I think of the hydrogen as neutral. It's neither electron donating nor electron withdrawing. This methyl group is electron donating, so it's tending to stabilize this partial positive charge making it less reactive. And these chlorines are electron withdrawing, so they're tending to destabilize the positive charge and make it more reactive. Before we look at, uh, were you assigned part B? Yes. So before we look at part B, we should mention there's another reason why carbonyl carbons are electrophilic. We know one reason they're electrophilic is that they have a delta positive, but there's another reason that you're, you're probably expected to know. What, what's the other reason that carbonyl carbons are electrophilic besides the fact that uh, the induction argument but with the delta positive? Let's try to draw another resonance structure for this compound. Let's use electron pushing arrows to draw the other resonance structure. Right. There's another resonance structure where there's a full positive charge on this carbon. In resonance, if you have a pi bond, a good way to get another significant resonance structure is to move the pi bond towards the more electronegative atom. Well, here we move the pi bond towards the more electronegative atom, and when we do that, we get this carbocation character here. That reinforces our earlier argument that there's positive character on this carbon, so it's electrophilic. And that also reinforces the idea that if we put more electron withdrawers around it, it'll destabilize it further. Whereas if we put electron donating alkyl groups, that'll help to stabilize it somewhat. So we can see that there's both an induction and a resonance argument for why the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic. That's good to know about both of those. Usually it's simpler just to focus on the delta positive so you don't have to actually draw this resonance structure, but it's good to know that it's there. So this question is telling us that when we treat acetone with this form of water, with oxygen 18, we get this product. And they're asking us to explain how this product is being formed. So do we just act, like do we just explain like through, do we draw a mechanism of catalyze? Let's see. Well, we could do a mechanism. I don't think we really need mechanisms here, though. We can just keep, we can just show the starting materials and intermediates and products. Okay. So, for example, if we reacted these two things together, what would be our uh, a good intro? What would be a product from that? First thing, it would steal the H. We have reacted which two things? 
Remember, the problem is telling us that they're reacting acetone with this labeled water. Now, this is oxygen 18. This is just oxygen that's, uh, that's a, an uncommon isotope. Okay. Wait, what does acetone look like? That's a good question. So yeah, let's make sure we can draw it out. Well, what does the acetone look like? Right. Acetone is just the smallest possible ketone. Acetone is the smallest possible ketone. That's a common name. I suppose the IUPAC name for this would be propadone, but no one ever uses that. Everyone calls this acetone. 